What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Macho Movie Madness. Oh, yeah. I am Brandon. Alongside me always is Andrew and Kenny. Today, we are doing Warehouse B, number 39, and it's Night of the Creeps. <laughs> have you ever watched Where that movie? Does, does the back <laughs> yeah, wow. dun, dun, yeah. dun, Have you ever dun, watched Hands of Steel? Oh, you need to. You need to. It, no, I think I have. It's, it's, I think I have seen it. It's on TV. Where they do the arm wrestling with the sna- and the snakes can bite them afterwards. It's like them. a serious movie, and it like it loses everything and becomes an arm wrestling movie. Yeah, for second. With a cyborg. That guy's the guy's like a, the Terminator. Yeah, you need to see it. Okay, yeah. yeah <laughs> Guys, this is something we've been wanting to talk about for just a little while now. Um, this is a movie that did not do very well at all in the box office back in 1986 when it was released. Uh, in fact, it's it's the um, the numbers are quite reversed here. Usually, you'll get a a uh, half a million dollar budget, and then you'll have you know a double or triple or whatever the number is. This one, no, this was made for five million, and it only brought in five hundred ninety one thousand. Real bomb. Yeah. Who, who ate that 4.5? Oh, man. Uh, well, it wasn't Tom Atkins. I can promise you that. Yeah. Tom Atkins probably ate something else. I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thrill me. I guarantee it. Yes. He ate it all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, this one here is, it's kind of an interesting movie. It's kind of a, more of a science fiction alien type movie yeah. zombie movie. it's kind of a little bit of everything yeah before we get really further into it i'm gonna have andrew go over the story okay because that's what he does <laughs> he is the, the story guy. oh yeah. i don't know about good. that trying to describe night of the creeps um mm. in, in the opening scene you have this spaceship and you've got these naked aliens <laughs> running around which yeah. to me is like the most jarring scene in the movie Ooh, they're so goofy yeah <laughs> and it's yeah it's nothing to do with anything i mean it's something to do with the movie but it's not it has no bearing on what the rest of the movie is it's right they, those so, they look like alien and a critter yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mean, really weird. Yeah, like a naked baby running. Around. Oh man, yeah, really weird. And uh, they basically have this experiment that they don't want to get off their ship, and this this one alien uh, unleashes it, and it lands in 1950s America. Basically, there's these slugs that get in and lay eggs in your brain, and so you fast forward to present day 1986, and in a frat prank gone wrong, uh, to try to gain this girl's affection, these these two guys go to steal this corpse from the 50s out of this uh, cryogenics lab. Yeah, basically. cryogenics lab. Mm-hmm. And of course, these slugs end up getting out and uh, getting in with the, with the town populace and with all the, the college kids. You've got Tom Atkins coming in to investigate. And, well, you know, what comes next is, is an hour and 20 minutes of just hilarity. Of and awesomeness. Yeah. B-movie awesomeness. Yeah. yeah. Things just going south real fucking quick. Yeah. And the scenery in this one's awesome too. Yeah. Again, you know, you're at, you got the school scene, Revenge of the Nerd style. Yeah. Like we're at college. Yeah, they're they're getting ready. It's like pledge week, and uh, of course he's trying to get in um, with the girl Cynthia Cronenberg. That's another thing. All these characters have names of other famous people. Yeah. Cronenberg, uh, Cameron. Who it's funny they chose Cameron because James Cameron had only done like one official movie at uh, yeah. the time. Right, right. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you got uh, you got Wally Taylor was the Detective Landis. Yes. So you get John. That's Jonathan Landis. Yeah. Uh, famous for American Werewolf in, in London and uh, Thriller. So that, that's that's pretty cool. Officer Craven was another one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely owed to all the the big directors or especially um, horror directors at the time. J. C. Hooper. Uh, James Carpenter is J. C. <laughs> Hooper. <laughs> A lot, a lot of, a lot of funny names like that that kind of pay a homage to the the big directors at the time, right? yeah. even like you said, even for James Cameron who just had done Terminator. Yeah, uh, really. Um, so yeah, you got more, you got like a science fiction alien movie meets zombies, and that's pretty much yeah, what this at is. a college at a college. Yeah. yeah. So you got Revenge of the Nerds meets zombies meets aliens meets yeah whatever, and it's it's just it's definitely campy. It's it's goofy. Uh, but all around, it's it's really good. The setting in this movie is absolutely incredible. Tom Atkins is every bit of Tom Atkins as you'd want yes. to be. Aside from Doctor Dan Chalice, that might be my that's still my favorite character. <laughs> um, he has gone on record to say this is his favorite performance. This one is his favorite movie he's ever done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Night of the Creeps. Night of the Creeps. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard an interview with him, and I like all the oh, leads man. in this movie. Him, uh, Chris, you know, who had done. Just the year before, he's in National Lampoon's European Vacation. Yeah, um, JC, I liked him. The girl, Cynthia Cronenberg, I thought she was, you know, just this really nice, shy girl next door type. I thought they were all just really endearing. Yeah, yeah. The characters were were, were fun. The, the acting really was not that bad. It was pretty good acting, I think. Oh, Brad's a dick. Brad's a <laughs> the dick. Bradster. The yeah, Bradster. The Bradster. <laughs> What do you guys think of like you know the effects and the kills, everything else in this movie? Pretty pretty solid, I think. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. with the exception of those aliens at the beginning, it's a yeah. pretty, uh, like I said, which feels so off putting compared to the rest compared of the, to the rest of the film. So if you could just get through those first few minutes, you know, you're home free. Yeah, and, and I don't hate it. It's 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 goofy yeah. in a charming way. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. be turned away by the aliens because <laughs> they're they're literally. I mean, it's it's two minutes and you'll never see them again. Right. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, but but I like the effects, especially like when their heads split open and uh, the alien slugs jump out yeah, everywhere. Yeah. They I, look like little roly polies. They they do. Yeah, they do. Just yeah. going across the floor. I really like that effect. I thought they were really cool. You guys got anything like favorite scene or anything you want to talk about? I love the the old axe murder. Yes, that old storyline from the yeah from fifties. Yeah. I do 50s. too. Yeah, it, yes. yeah. It, it plays into that uh, escape mental patient. Thing yeah. that you love, that you know, it's on the radio, and this is kind of an ode to those things too. Yeah. It's to those like fifties alien abduction abduction movies. I, I really like that how it has that fifties feel throughout the thing. Even some of the dialogue reminds me of something they yeah. would say in those movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. when he even just like when he turns on the radio, mm-hmm. yes, he just got that old fifties music going. But yeah, now I know, I know, Amy had her. Her, she yeah. had some bugaboos. <laughs> yeah, we about this, we, had a, we had a text exchange that you weren't aware of the other night. Yeah. But the and that ties into this scene because one of my favorite scenes is when he comes back and he's because he's under that house, yes. right? And he just axes his way up through the floor, right? And uh, dude, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her whole thing was the the alien slugs had to like. Go, go into your brain and lay eggs in there and, and a corpse like that wouldn't have a brain left after like five to seven That's years true. your brain would be Amy yeah. just stop yeah. gotta just, overlook that you're, yeah. you're thinking way yeah. too heavy into this kind of movie <laughs> quit reaching this movie made half a million dollars quit reaching yeah <laughs> this is a big time <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no def- definitely uh, definitely cool it, I think like any like anything else the way to beat them you just kill them with fire yeah it's just like the best thing to kill anything burn them with fire Burn them with fire. Also, want to make mention the endings are different depending on what you get. I think now the, there's a theatrical ending, and then there's the ending that the the, the director the director's cut. cut ending, which they released, which, with is, which is this one right here, right? Which is the only one I've ever seen. Uh, we'll just do a spoiler alert on it. The original ending that they show is Chris and Cynthia standing in front of a burning sorority house. With the camera moving to the street where the police cars race towards the burning building. The police cars race by the charred and zombified Cameron, who is shuffling down the street, still smoking a cigarette. Uh, when he suddenly stops and falls to the ground, his head then bursts open and the slugs that incub- incubated inside his brain scamper out of the slit and slither towards the nearby cemetery, suggesting that the slugs have found new hosts to inhabit. That's uh, That's something that is 
I think pretty cool. That just gives you this this really bleak ending. Yes, I don't like that ending. Yeah, don't that like would, the ending. That would never happen to him. <laughs> the uh, the the theatrical version is just a dog. The dog who caused the bus accident returns and approaches Cynthia. As Cynthia bends down towards it, the dog opens his mouth and the slug jumps out towards her. That's just game over. I kind of I kind of don't like that one more. You I think like I, I think more. I think I dislike that one more. See, I don't like I don't like the other one. I don't like them do my you get more I know, I know. Yeah, because he was such a good character in this. Yeah, that's true. And he, he goes through so much. Like he's tortured. Right. You know, he saw his girl get hacked up. Mm-hmm. You know, by this guy. And at one point in this movie, and he's then, gonna he's gonna gas himself. Well, doesn't yeah, he? He killed the axe murderer, right? right? Yeah, and then buried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like there there wasn't no like police report done or, or no. anything like that. Like he. He just killed that son yeah. of a bitch yeah. and took care of it. And so. I, I love yeah. his confession, too, to Chris <laughs> there in the house, too. Yeah. He's, he's, and uh, he's like, shouldn't you be telling this to the police? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, he, he just that's a great job by Tom Atkins in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, just, I see your point. Yeah. I mean, I he ain't point. no, he's not no bitch. And no, they're, man. They're not going to no. get yeah, in his right. brain. You're right. You're right. This was another bugaboo that Amy had. And, and this one was valid. And I'm, I'm, oh. I'm going to give her this one. <laughs> okay. I'll let you. Oh, Andrew. that what would a body that was cryogenically frozen in the 50s be doing in a science lab in college? Uh, that's, with, that's zero, with hardly zero security. That's, that, yeah, that makes sense, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, well, maybe they <laughs> maybe they gave up on the thing after so many years. Yeah. They, they didn't find any alien activity because he was cryogenically frozen. And they're like, here, you guys. I don't know. It's all a reach. It is. She, it she's is. thinking way too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think she just wants to just be a party pooper. That's what I think. Yeah, don't don't be a party pooper. Don't be a party pooper, Amy. <laughs> um, but what I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I love all the character dynamics, you know, between the interpersonal relationship between JC and Chris. Yeah. And this thing, lot, you believe those guys are best friends oh, until yeah. the end. In this for sure, thing. for sure. Yeah. It's played very well. Absolutely. The, uh, um, what's his freaking name? Alan with, with two L's and an A. Ugh. Oh, uh, Brad? Yeah. Makes Brad. me sick. Like him and his friends. Terrible. Yeah. You're the betas. You know, just, just a bunch of cocks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Like. Not good. Those are guys you just... You're watching the show and like you're just you're gonna want to punch those guys in the face because yeah. <laughs> they're just they're rotten. Yeah. Uh, anybody have any more cons for about, about the movie or anything like that you want to talk about? No, no. no I think it's, I think it's great. I think yeah. it's a very fast paced movie. Yeah. And pays homage to you know all so the fifties things. So way more pros. Yeah. Um. Okay. So thinking about that, I want to talk about the reception of this movie. It's definitely a cult classic now. It, obviously, we, we mentioned the budget and, and the box office did not do well at all. It's developed quite a following, but I wanted to just like go over this just real quick because this is interesting. For it not doing well at the box office, there's been so many reviews of this movie that's so positive. Yes. So it's just so crazy. So, like Rotten Tomatoes has it's at seventy three percent. You know, average rating was 6.7 out of 10. That's pretty good considering the box office. Nigel Floyd of Time Out of London wrote that the direction and special effects are poor, but the film is still enjoyable enough in a ramshackle sort of way. Michael Gingold of Fangoria rated a 3.5 out of 4 stars and called it one of the year's most surprisingly entertaining fright features, one that homaged practically every subgenre imaginable, yet kept a sure hand on its tone and never descended into spoofery. Dead Central rated a 5 out of 5. Called it a classic in every sense of the word. IGN rated it 7 out of 10. I mean, we're talking very above average to really good, strong reviews. So, what else come out? 86, right? Oh, 86 was a huge year. Oh, big year. Could, I mean, could it have been hindered by well, that? I, well, I mean, and I and I can look real quick and see. Um, we, know, what, we know what the biggest movie of 86 oh, yeah. was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we covered that here just, you know, not too long ago. Yeah, Howard the Duck. Um, <laughs> um, biggest movie of the year. I mean, you had, I mean, there's I a lot Howard of different stuff. 
Cobra is one of the biggest ones. Friday the 13th, was it part six? Part six, Top Gun. Top Gun was the biggest one. Aliens. Aliens. Maximum Overdrive. April. Which we need to cover we for where else. April Fool's Day. The Hitcher. Oh, yeah. Still forgetting the biggest movie of 86. Yeah, you've not hit it yet. Short Circuit. I think he's doing this on purpose now. Great movies. Karate Kid Part 2. You have to tell me what the biggest movie is. Oh, oh my goodness. Because I'm... I'm trying to think of what you guys are talking about here. I've already I've already said Top Gun and Aliens. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And Aliens... But, but you've not talked means, about the best movie aliens. of 1986. Yeah. You, did you, now, the best or the biggest? The best. the best. The biggest and the best? Stand By Me? No. No, what is it? <laughs> come on. 86? I mean, come on. Oh, Big Trouble. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. I forgot it that was 86. That shit on purpose. I forgot that was 86. <laughs> Firewalker. Relax, gentlemen. Relax. Firewalker. Uh, no. Uh, 86. A, a banging year. So what? I could see maybe if it got lost in, yeah. in that. Because there was a lot of, there's a lot of badass movies in there. Mm. They come out there. I don't even think you covered, wasn't Platoon 86? Mm. I didn't see Platoon. There was just some of them that you said in there that were like just made my ears tingle when you said it. Like aliens. The fly. Mm. Cobra. Cobra. The labyrinth. Wanna go to hell with me, pig? There's yeah. a lot of movies that year. There's a lot of moviegoers going to see some other shit. There's no wonder why this thing Right. Just it just a little bit too weird for the masses seeing all this other stuff. Right. Although I would watch this over the fly. No disrespect yeah, to the see, fly. I love the fly. I, lo- I like the fly. I like Jeff Goldblum a lot. Love Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. But I like this movie a lot. A lot more. It's just got, it, it's got better pace. It does. For sure. You gotta be patient with the fly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You only gotta be patient for the first two minutes of this movie. That's it. Just get through <laughs> those aliens. Yeah. And even then it's funny. And then it's gonna thrill you. <laughs> yeah. Kill you and thrill you. Whine you. And then Tom's gonna whine you and dine you. Yeah. <laughs> And you know that's right. And you're going to take it, too. <laughs> and you're going to like it. That's a stupid question, Miss Gimbridge. Yeah. That's a mustache rides for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Where do you want to sleep, Mr. Chalice? That's a stupid question. Um, anything else you guys want to say about, about uh, Night of the Creeps? Yeah, this, this has something for everybody. Even if you're not like a sci-fi loving freak like me and, and Kenny... Um, it's it's still got you know the college thing going on. It's got the comedy deal, mm-hmm. the buddy thing, yeah. uh, the the hard boiled cop deal. Yeah. It's it's got something for everybody. So. And, and it's not a gore fest. No, no I mean not. so it's pretty campy. It's pretty fun though. It's, it's got its serious moments too, like mm-hmm. where JC kind of bites it there toward the end. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I love yeah, it's this. Not all movie. sunshines and rainbows. That's for sure. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys want to do for ratings on this? Because I kind of want to give this a five. I'm going to give it a five just because on a warehouse B scale, this is, this is kind of the epitome of what we do on this channel. Yeah. It's true. It's things like night of the creeps. Yeah. For me, there's nothing wrong with this film. No, for me, I, I dig it. I love it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I hate to give something a perfect score. I could, I don't even think I could do that for Halloween, even though yeah. you know I'm so partial to that movie. You're too hardcore. Uh, but I'm gonna have to give it a four point five out of five. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'll, that's what I'll do. Uh, and one of the reasons is those aliens at the beginning. <laughs> you had to find a bugaboo about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right. But it's a very like you said, it's the epitome of what we do. Yeah. And you're not going to find too many solid warehouse B movies yeah. like this. Yeah. It's got everything and it's just fun. We have we have reviewed the cream of the crop and we have reviewed some dreck. Yeah. You didn't even get to do uh, the alien factor with no, me. No, you guys did that bullshit. You already put me <laughs> you already put me through the other one. Well, Night go, Beast. N- Night Beast. We're gonna go through it again. Oh. Cause, Cause Kenny said Night Beast was way better than Alien Factor even. That's great. That's great for Night Beast. <laughs> We're, we're thinking about redoing Alien Factor. Well, I don't know why. To include me? To include you. Oh, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> but, trying to stay positive, maybe. <laughs> I got to work in the pharmacy. It's so much day. fun. <laughs> I get enough of 
crazy shit then. Oh, we've we've found some some, <laughs> some promising <laughs> films. <laughs> We got some dandies down the road, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, you just tell me about those dandies and I'll consider. <laughs> I might just skip on the Alien Factor and I'll do the next one. What else are we going to do? What are we going to do for next for number 40? So coming up next, we've got Highlander 3 for episode number 40. The Final Dimension. A little Christopher Lambert action going on. So Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun to do. Because there could be only one. There can be or, only one. Or three or four. Three or four or five. Yeah. <laughs> and then you bring an end game or whatever, and you bring the guy from the show in. Okay, yes. so okay. Warehouse 40, Highlander 3, The Final Dimension. Anything else you want to add? Nope. Okay. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Night of the Creeps. If you have not watched it, we highly recommend you do so right now. And hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss a damn thing in the future. Until next time. Thrill me. <laughs>